What's up everybody and welcome back to Traveling Expat Life and uh, thanks for joining us today here in a beautiful but a little bit cool day in uh, Spokane, Washington. And so I'm walking out here among this, uh, in this forest and I started thinking about, I've been back in the United States for about six weeks now and a few things really uh, stuck out to me uh, as I've gone through my, my life here in the, in the last six weeks. Um, number one, uh, a couple things combined, is uh, the um, checkout process when you're at a store or at a restaurant or someplace buying something here in the United States. And uh, one thing that's different than in Europe that I'm not used to is that uh, in Europe when you go shopping and you see a price on something, um, and that's what the that's what the price is. That's what you're gonna pay when you check out. So that includes the price of the item and also the sales tax. But here in the United States, that is not the case. So you go shopping and you see a price. Oh, great! That cost five ninety five. I have exactly six dollars, so I can go check out. Um, but that's not tip. Normally, that's not what the price is gonna be because sales tax is added at the uh, cash register. And so they punch up the price and they add whatever percentage of sales tax is. And the thing that kind of makes that more confusing is that uh, sales tax is regulated uh, uh, by the different states. So every state has a different sales tax. Um, and, and sometimes, some states have no sales tax, but every state has a different sales tax. And sometimes even the county adds a sales tax to it. So in the United States, sales tax ra ranges anywhere from a little over 12% and some places it's zero percent so you never really know so that can be confusing when you check out is when you get that sales tax added at the end and the other thing that uh, uh, is confusing to me or kind of throws me off a little bit is the the tip culture here in the United States so basically everywhere you go if you are getting some type of service whether that's uh, uh, at a restaurant you're getting waited on at, at your table or if you're at the coffee shop uh, getting a coffee, um, everyone asks for a tip and that, that's kind of kind of strange. So you go to check out, so you go to the stand, you get a, a latte or a cappuccino or maybe just a regular coffee where they just have to open the tap and pour it into your cup. When you check out, they're going to ask you, um, it's automatically going to come up on the screen, um, how much tip you want to give. And so the choices are normally 10%, 15%, 20%, maybe even 25% sometimes. But there normally is not an option for 0%. So if you don't wanna give a tip, uh, you kind of have to look around and fish around for that no tip to give. And uh, so they're asking for the tip before they ever even give you the service. So you don't know, service might be terrible, but they want you to give a tip before you get it anyway, which just seems a little strange to me. In Europe, that's not the case. Uh, typically, tips are, are uh, a much less amount, like you might round up to uh, a couple euros, uh, or maybe if your bill is, you know, 45 euros and 50 cents, you know, you're probably gonna give them 50 euros or something like that. So the tips are, 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 not, are not as expected as often, and they're not expected to be as high. Now, here in the US, part of the tip culture is because your wait staff at restaurants, um, they are paid below minimum wage in most states. So they have to earn their money. They have to earn their money on tips. So if you don't give them a tip, then they're really struggling. So, and I find that kind of weird that we have a minimum wage in the United States, but in a lot of places, the wait staff actually work for under the minimum wage with the expectation that they're gonna make up for that in tips. So that seems kind of strange for me. Now, another thing that seems kind of odd to me is the, um, uh, for me personally, and I think uh, this uh, goes for a lot of Americans, is the lack of activity in our daily lives. So we pretty much have to drive everywhere. Uh, even if you're gonna go like half a mile away, you're pretty much gonna get in your car and you're gonna drive there. Um, and I guess there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's, it's kind of difficult to walk. There really aren't a lot of sidewalks uh, taking people to places that are far away. And people tend to not live where the stores are at. So we kind of have a separation of uh, shopping and living. And that's not always the case in Europe, especially in big cities. Um, you might just live right down the block from the grocery store where you're gonna go. So it's much easier to go down and walk. Now, 
here since I've been in the US for the last six weeks, pretty much every day I've been to the gym and I've been working out and I've had some pretty good workouts and sometimes I've been going twice a day. And then as I look at my fitness tracker, um, most days that's almost all of the activity I get is the time I spend purposely working out at the gym. Uh, so just in my day-to-day -day life, I don't get a lot of activity. And when I lived in Europe, uh, I walked all the time, uh, just living my life. You know, you're going up and down stairs, you're walking from here to there. So on my um, fitness tracker, a lot of times I would meet my fitness goals for the day and I wouldn't even work out. I would just live my life walking around. So that seems strange to me. Um, and also the difficulty in uh, public transport. There's just not a lot of public transport here in the U.S. where I'm at. In, uh, in Eastern Washington right now in Spokane. There are buses uh, that come, they have uh, set schedules, but uh, it's, 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 it's challenge, challenging. It's not like the trams or the subways or the multiple buses that we had uh, uh, back in Europe. So speaking of walking and public transport, so now uh, I'm gonna walk to the nearest uh, bus stop, which is supposed to be 0.7 miles away from my apartment that's the nearest one so we'll see uh, how long it takes to get there and now I want to point out that I don't live in a in a small town uh, Spokane uh, is the second biggest uh, city in Washington so it's it's a it's a very it's a very urbanized area it's not like I live out in the middle of the country anywhere but uh, yeah there aren't a lot of uh, public transport options around so we're gonna walk there we'll measure it and we'll see how long it takes us to get there all right, so uh, we're on our way to the uh, bus stop and we're walking. I do have a sidewalk to walk on, which is handy, but I've got to cross the road and there's no crosswalks. And there is a lot of traffic here. So um, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, a lot of cars here, a lot of traffic and there is No crosswalk. All right, so the bus stop we were going to, um, we um, couldn't cross the road. There was too much traffic, so we waited and waited. Then we turned around and came to another bus stop. And so here it is. And uh, this one goes to a, a park and ride, I guess. I'm not sure where, where else it goes to. Uh, the other one, we could hop on and go directly downtown. I don't really know where this one goes to, but it's right here and just look at you right out in the elements. Um, there's no cover, there's no benches. So you just have to stand. And um, if it's raining, you get rained on. If the sun's beating down, you get sunburned. Um, no place to sit, there's no cover. And you sit here and let uh, watch the cars go by. So it's pretty tough. If you don't have a car, it's pretty difficult to get around around here. So when you check out at the grocery store and you look at the prices even before you check out, uh, the fruits and vegetables, the fresh food is so expensive that I can really understand why a lot of people just choose to uh, go through the drive through or just buy some packaged convenience food because the, the costs are quite quite shocking here in the United States to be quite honest. And um, it's not that way in Europe, at least I didn't find it that way. So I think uh, the government subsidizes uh, you know, fruits and vegetables to keep the prices low. And also, I mean, I think the people just tend to demand more, more fresh food. And there's not the convenient aspect. Yes, they have fast food chains. Yes, they have McDonald's and Burger King and they have Kentucky Fried Chicken. But they're not, they don't seem to be around every corner like they are here in the United States. So I think it's, it's much less frequent for people to, to go to a fast food place than, than, it, than it is here because fruits and vegetables are cheaper, fresh food is cheaper, and they cook a lot more at home. It just, that, that's just what it seems like to me. And I know that was my experience. That's what we did. We cooked a lot more at home instead of uh, going to fast food places. And another issue I think in the United States is, like I mentioned earlier, is the, the separation of where people live and where people shop. So it's 
normally a great distance to go to the grocery store. I mean, it's at least, at least a mile or two normally from where someone lives. So you almost have to drive. And so if you don't have a car, that can be a real challenge, especially with our lack of public transport. But there normally are convenience stores, so you may not be able to go uh, down and buy some uh, fresh food to cook, but you could probably go down to the corner and get some sort of junk food to take home. Now, when I lived in Europe, I lived in Leipzig, uh, a, a big city in, uh, in Germany, and we had grocery stores. I lived right in the middle of the city, and we had multiple grocery stores all within two or three blocks of where I lived. So it was very easy just to walk downstairs and uh, go out to the street, and in uh, just a couple minutes, you were at a grocery store. You had your choice to, to buy anything you wanted to prepare at home. So that's, that's a vast difference between the U.S. and, uh, and your and in, in the United States, we have the big drive-through culture. So basically, every fast food place and every coffee shop pretty much has a, a drive-through. So you don't even have to get out of your car to walk into the fast food place. You just, on your way home from work, you drive by the fast food place, you whip around, go through the drive-through, get your food, and oftentimes you've eaten dinner on your way home. So by the time you get home, you've already eaten dinner, you just throw the sack away and then, and then that's it. Um, yeah, so big difference in Europe. I didn't see, now, now there are some drive-through places for sure, don't get me wrong, but the prevalence of, uh, of drive-through fast food places in Europe is, is definitely not as big as it is here in the United States. And another thing that I think adds to the uh, drive-through culture here in the United States is just the fact that we don't have anything, we don't have any problems with setting in a line in our cars and just letting our car run for 10, you know, 15 minutes or whatever the case may be. Whereas in, in Europe, with the price of fuel there, I mean, people would never do that. And that's quite shocking to me to just think that how people will readily set in a drive through line and just sit there and let their car run while they're waiting to get their food. Um, and I just saw um, something on the news a couple of days ago. There was a, a new coffee place that's supposed to uh, rival Starbucks. I think McDonald's has a coffee place that only sells coffee. And they opened up their first store, I, I believe it was near Chicago, and people sat in line in their cars for the drive through for up to four hours just to drive through and get coffee. And that's just crazy to me. I mean, who would do that? I can't imagine Germans sitting in a drive through line for more than 15 minutes, much less four hours. That's truly shocking. Cucumbers, $1.49 each. Organic cucumbers, though. That means they're really good. $4.49 for one piece of cake. Fresh fruit tart, $6.99 a piece. Or you could just go to uh, a nice cafe in Germany and have uh, cake and coffee for much less than that. Look how wide these aisles are. There's so much room. You can push your cart down here, spin it around, pass other people. Don't have to worry about hitting anyone. There's nice music playing. It's just a very relaxed atmosphere. One thing that's nice about being in the United States is that the grocery stores are big and beautiful and they have free restrooms readily available right here by the front door. And that's one thing that's sometimes difficult to find in Germany is public bathrooms, especially in stores like this. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel to join us on further adventures.